Hi, it's uh, Ray from Pro Shaper Workshop in Charlton, Massachusetts, and uh, we're back on that porch panel. We've got two installments in and now, just the third installment, and it's fitting pretty good, except for this spot here. We did do some internal shrinking to help the reverse curve, but obviously it's not enough. So, um, how are we going to solve that problem? That's the question. So, you can stretch this out like crazy right on this edge and then you bring that stretch inboard and that will lay down but the problem is this edge is going to go paper thin by the time to get that done so that was the reason why I was doing the internal shrink I, I maybe only got about 30 percent uh, if I would used that new shrink tool that I made from the elbow the water elbow I think I could have done a little bit better but I didn't have that ready to go yet so what we're going to do is do something a little bit different. It's one of the uh, potentials that you have with a wire form buck is that we can heat shrink it right on the wire form buck. It's very easy to clamp the panel onto the wire form buck because wherever the wire is, you reach in with the clamps. What I use for clamps, these are simple spring clamps. I buy them at Home Depot. They're 99 cents. You can't argue about the price. And then uh, I put these little rubbers in here. Uh, I used to buy neoprene rubber from McMaster Car, but it was almost as expensive as the, as the clamps themselves. So then I found out that you can get some nice rubber from um, Tractor Supply. They make these nice heavy-duty mats, and I've been cutting those up. But you can also get an old uh, uh, transfer belt. Uh, some of them are about that wide or so. They're all reinforced with uh, linen and cloth or whatever. And somebody gave me a section of that, and those worked really good. So what it allows you to do is to clamp really, really good, and it's a, a soft bite because it has the rubber on the jaws. So I've got this clamped in a bunch of spots, and you can see right here, this is what I call a peak. That's where there's too much metal right there, uh, and there's a couple ways to solve that. And one, you can probably use a kick shrinker and bring that in, but that makes all the kick shrinker marks. Uh, I can do a gather in my gathering uh, press and pull that in. That makes the marks you have to clean up. And it's very minor. It's not much. It's just peeking out there just a little bit. That's a super common phenomenon on just about every single panel you'll, you'll make. You'll have this little extra material. And uh, now remember that if you stretch right in board here, that will do the same thing. It'll solve the problem of the peak. You stretch in here and then that'll go away. I might do that when we get to it. But this is the main problem. This is what we're going to deal with in this segment here. And I've got this, there's a nice piece of angle iron inner structure here for the wire form. And I can clamp on this clamp. And if I clamp that down, there's a, a, a peak starting over here. This is the metal just bulging out over there. Uh, I might have to attack that later, but right now I'm going to attack this here. So let's put some heat on here. And uh, Mark did take some shots of the inside with a little light. And you can see there's actually about uh, two and a half inches or so of clearance between the skin and the wire form. The, the rest of the, the skin is conforming pretty good to the wire form. Even around all in here, that's pretty good. It just, it's tilting this way. So we've got to settle that in and the whole thing will go in. So let's try throwing a little heat at it. We just want to warm it up to 300 degrees or so. If you go too hot with aluminum, uh, it'll go, I don't know what temperature it actually is, but you can experiment and if you get it too hot it gets crumbly. So we don't want to get into that crumbly stage. If it does, we're in trouble and we'd have to weld in a new piece there, but I don't think we'll have that problem. You know, this is the most difficult part of the this panel and it's probably one of the most, uh, one of four or five difficult spots on the body, on this 550 body. Most of the other stuff on the 550 body is pretty easy, 
the back and the front of any car is where you're going to find this difficult reverse curve panel stuff. And as I mentioned before, um, a lot of uh, when these were made new, this would probably be annealed, and I haven't annealed this aluminum. And someone's commented, why don't you anneal it? We would do the other side, we'll try annealing it, and, and it'll be a little bit easier, but um, it's not a big factor. But if you were hammer forming it on a full surface buck, the annealing would definitely help you out. Uh, here, uh, it would probably help me out a little bit too, but we'll try it without annealing. It's 050, it's pretty malleable aluminum, it moves pretty decent. So I just want to show you the benefit of using the heat to it. Now, uh, well, before I do that, I want to just say that we've made these in different ways. Um, the way I've made it now where the whole headlight bucket is part of the rest of the panel here, and it's going to the center. So we're making the whole, whole face of the car basically in two pieces. And then there'll be an under lip here, which will be two pieces. So it'll, it's all total, there'll be four pieces. You could make this under lip in one piece, and you could make it uh, in three pieces total. Uh, but this is the way I've chosen for doing the aluminum one. When we made the steel ones with the students, I know that the students, uh, this is a tough problem for the students to solve. So we made them in a, a couple different ways. And if you lay the uh, a panel, we split it. We had the front fender, uh, the top of the front fender section coming down to about here and then having this panel come to here, then it's a lot easier to do that way. So let's go to the heat and see what kind of results we can get. Just going to warm this up and then we'll start hitting it in. Remember aluminum uh, migrates the heat really fast so it cools down pretty quick. The danger is if I do overheat it um, it'll usually be if you're talking to somebody and you're not paying attention and you get too close and it'll heat up real quick in one spot so I'm going to pay attention here and hopefully Mark can get the action so you can see what's going on. Now this bulge looks like it's popping up more, so I'm going to take that bulge and shrink that down too. It's a ridge that it's created a ridge there. My hammer's got a, a real uh, roundy face to it, so I'm not going to be edge biting at all with the hammer. So it looks like I'm seesawing. I hit this down, it pops out over here. So there's going to be a certain element of that, but we'll win the battle. I'm just going to take the time to do it. And the objective here is not to have to thin this edge all out. We're, we're actually shrinking all around in here. So we shrink a little bit there. It pops it up over here. And then we shrink back over there. And all this will planish out really easy too. Just no worry about what the surface looks like at this point.
This edge needs to be stretched, so I'm going to heat it up a little bit. Get that edge down. Look how much that popped out. It's amazing. Now what we'll do is we'll try to capture that. So we got that, we have that down pretty good. Let's put that clamp on there and hold that down so that when we hit this, it doesn't seesaw back at us. So we'll get a clamp right in here. Yeah, and then we can grab it with a clamp up there too. So it migrated the metal over to here. Let me take a look at the back side. Uh, it still looks pretty bad back there. It's getting better, but it's uh, a good distance away. All right, we got this clamp down pretty nice, and then we'll hit it a little bit more. Then we're going to deal with this extra metal over here, migrated over there. Now, if you're familiar with the uh, Kirkham Cobras, um, the story where David Kirkham, I believe, went over to Poland back in the early 90s, and he went to a, a Polish uh, facility that uh, worked on Soviet MiGs, MiG fighters, and uh, the Soviet Union had collapsed, and uh, they were the people at the factory, the owners, were looking for something to to do, and. David went over there and they said, well, we'll make our Cobra bodies for you. And so they made Cobra bodies for years for Kirkham Cobra and all out of aluminum. And they would do them very similar to what I'm doing here, but they would use these nice little tables with a bunch of turnbuckles that they would grip the uh, blank of aluminum. So it would be imagined that this would turn up like this and they would have these grippers all on the edge pulling down, which is similar to clamping, but better because it's putting that pressure on it. And when you put that pressure on it, you won't get these uh, seesawing events where you pound it out here and it's gonna move over to here. So we'll have to shrink that too. So um, if you've seen those Kirkham Cobras, they did a beautiful job on them by doing that hammer forming technique. And uh, in a way, that's die work uh, because they've got a, a male die and they're beating the panel over the male die, acting like the female part of the die process. So in a way, this is a cheat like that too, but these are very difficult pieces to do. And you either have to do some kind of operation like this or you have to figure out exactly uh, where you're going to change that surface um, area value. So, uh, and, and something like this reverse curve in here can be a really tricky uh, problem for a beginner, even for an advanced person. Um, and the other uh, detriment, if you figure it out and you try to do it by um, stretching this edge, you'll get it to lay down but this edge will be really, really thin. Now you can do it also by making it in a separate piece. So if you made this in a separate piece, like if you had a seam over here and a seam over here, then it becomes an uh, a, a easier problem where you just stretch this edge and you stretch that edge and the valley, you don't do anything and the valley will stay in. 
but uh, every which way you, you attempt to do it, there's always going to be some little problem, either that you have to spend the time to make a hammer form or you're going to thin the metal out really thin or you have to make more pieces and you got to do more welding. Uh, there's essentially no easies. Uh, everybody's always coming to my class looking for an easy solution. There's no such thing as an easy solution. Uh, when you make a complex shape like the nose of this uh, Porsche with these reverse curved elements, and that's true of a lot of uh, cars, that to make the, the nose interesting, which is the brand identity, uh, there's always going to be some reverse curves you're going to see in the nose. So, so let's see if I can pound this in a little bit more and a little bit more over here. We got the clamp back on. It's going to pop a little bit. And uh, we'll see how close we can get it today. It's going to look a little ugly because we're not, I don't think we're going to planish it out today. Next time we'll, we'll planish it all out. Mm. See, so I'll get that down. If I can clamp it, I can maintain it, but I don't know if the clamps are slipping here, so let me get another. Maybe get another deep clamp in here. Grab that wire. All right, and we'll see if we can attack this bulge that formed. There's a hard spine. That's where the metal's colliding. Let's take a little different approach here. Let me uh, spot and kneel that, and uh, then we'll continue on. The metal will be softer, it'll maybe more. Uh, uh, an, an easier attempt to get that to shrink up. So let me get the uh, other torch set up and we'll anneal it. All right, I have the other torch set up as a cutting torch. We're not going to use the uh, the big rosebud today. Just anneal that section there. So we're going to burn this soot off and we should be a little bit softer here. Got a heavy coating of soot here, so I'm going to take my time. The aluminum loves heat. And there we have it. The soot's burnt off. We'll wait till that temperature comes down a little bit. The kneeling temperature is 750 degrees. Ideally, uh, we can wait till it cools to about uh, two or three hundred, and then then it'll still be more malleable, and it should be all nice and soft then too. Yeah, the heat's, the heat's migrated way over here. So right, I've opted to let this air cool and I can keep my hand on it over here. It gets a little hotter as it comes over here. This is a lot of heat migrated higher. So that uh, headlight bucket's pretty hot. I think we're, we're probably in a safe zone here. So I'm gonna try to take in a slapper and hitting that right there. So it looks like a big mess right now, but that'll all uh, planish out really good.
Most of this is going to be cut out. There's just going to be a ring for your headlight there. All right, that looks severe ugly, but let's planish that out and we put it back on and then see what we got. Get in close there, I might have to use the planishing hammer or the power hammer or a smaller wheel or something, but I'll get a little bit of that there. All right, now let's put it back on the wire form and see what we have. Okay, we got it all clamped on, and uh, looking at the back side, I can see the distance is about uh, maybe even uh, less than. Um, uh, more than a half of what we needed to do. Um, it was almost three inches away and now it's about an inch and a half away in one little section here. The rest of it's conforming really nicely. It's only just still this little section here. We gained more than a half of what we wanted in that one attempt, first attempt. So. And this is really peaking bad right now, so it looks like I'll definitely have to put a shrinking there. So a little minor peak over here, maybe another shrink over here would help too. So I can mark those. We'll do a little shrink here and a little shrink right there. But it still still needs some strong shrinking right in this region here. So we'll go back to the heat again. Take the little torch. It's getting a lot closer in here.
take that off and planish that out and see what it looks like. I'm going to planish it out again. We're not stretching it, we're just smoothing it, very little pressure on it. I miscalculated my uh, angle of attack here and I got a little uh, wheel bite. That's a little scar on it. It'll go right away though. Just did it again. <laughs> I might have to go with the smaller wheel. This diameter is a little too big. two shrinks in right here. Let me try to do that. All right, I'm going to use my gathering tool, put a little shrink in here. I could do it on the, with the thumbnail die, but we'll try this way. And I go over to my shrinking facilitator. Two shrinks, now let's planish them out. Let's try it on the uh, wire form again. All right, it's fitting better and better. We, we got a new little peak here and a little one there. We took the shrinks in them, but it wasn't enough. The uh, distance now on the back side, Mark took a shot of it. It uh, was about three inches before. The widest point is right here now. It migrated down to here, and that's about one inch. So we'll heat that up and hammer that in. We might have to do it a couple more times before we get uh, really close here. Yeah. Get that clamp back up at the top there. I usually put uh, vice grips with little protectors on it so they don't bite into the aluminum. The padded ones aren't so uh, bad, but the uh, regular vice grips will bite in with their jaws. So I might have to switch to that as we get closer here.
Alright, we're almost hitting the wire there now. It's going to keep popping back and forth. Let me hit that and it's going to have to stretch out a little bit up there. But the metal fights you uh, doing this hammer form technique um, with the method that the poles use for those cobra pots. That's probably the the nice nicest situation where you can really pull it down. You have the metal captured at all times. Now they probably are using a kneeled sheet when they're doing that and midway through they might have to re-anneal it and do it again. Well, they're taking the smooth that out now. I'm going to wheel that in. Get the small wheel and we'll get into here. Smooth that up. Now the fit's getting a lot better. Still not there, but it's getting a lot better. Okay, now we've put it back on and I've put some of my clamps with these little protectors. They protect the panel. And I just uh, slapped it a little bit there and all this excess metal in the center, with it's gonna be cut out anyways, but I don't wanna cut it out now. Uh, that could, I could shrink that down. And it's pretty close to the wires except for right here. We, we had a situation where we were shrinking this and it, it caused it to migrate somewhat because we're not clamped really thorough. So it migrated down here. We, we took most of it out of here and it's migrated a little bit that way too. So slowly but sure, we'll, we'll get all these migrations under control and let the metal conform to our wishes. So we'll do a little more shrinking. It's pretty close and it's like three quarters of an inch at the widest spot right here still. 
So let's uh, let's see if we can shrink this big bubble up here first. have to take this out but I'm opting to get it out of here. Most of it anyways. Every, every time you see those hard spines that means the metal's colliding with itself. So now we'll Check that spot that's the widest now, and it's right at the bottom here. We, we want to get that on, on the wire. It's off the wire a little bit right in here. Too. We're going to knock that down a little bit. Oh, looks like my clamp let go. Yeah, let me get my clamp back on. Looks like a mess again, and uh, we'll smooth it out. a little fat in here so I'm letting off some of the uh, area value by stretching the edge a little bit 
And if we look at the horizon view, we got a little bit of a bubble right there, kind of migrated right down there. So I can let that off, even though I put a shrink in there earlier. Looks like I'm going to have to uh, let it off a little bit. Yeah, let's see what that looks like. It's a pretty unusual shape as you can see it. It's all over the place. Beautiful shape. We probably still have a few more shrink rounds that we'll have to chase after those little bit of a high bump still. But watch this now. Now it's fitting on there pretty nice. So I'll get it all clamped up and then we'll do an assessment on it. Here we are. There's probably about, I think, five or six rounds of shrinking and planishing. It takes uh, probably 10, 15 minutes for each round uh, to clamp it up, heat it, shrink it, then planish it. And every time you do that, the panel gets fit to your, your buck better and better. I'm about at the widest point now, about three-eighths or maybe a half an inch, it still needs a little more shrinking right in here. So, uh, what I really wanted to show with this video, and it kind of uh, evolved too, because I could have done a lot more with the flexible shape patent, but I opted to use the flexible shape patent to get it to a point where we could put it, put it on the buck. But I want to show the uh, positive uh, elements of using a wire form buck, which you can see how great it is that you can clamp so easily. And clamping is super important to be able to uh, nail down what you need to do next with your panel. And this is the best thing about a, a wire form buck is you can go back here and you can watch your progress. It's so easy just to look back here and see where it's wide and where it's tight. When it's tight, you send it out this way. Where it's wide, you can shrink if you opt to. And that's one of the beautiful things of a wire form is you have that option of shrinking using that wire form buck because the, uh, the wire form metal uh, doesn't care about the heat. If you had a wood buck, you'd be setting fires on it and um, the wire form can take the hammering. It's not an abusive amount of hammering. It's a lot of light hits that add up. It's not the ideal way to shrink, as I mentioned, the way the Polish firm that used to do the Soviet MIGs. They have that really nice station where they're pulling down on the metal around its entire perimeter. There's a lot of extra metal on the uh, the panel, the blank that they're starting with, allows them to put grippers on and that's all cut off after. And that pulling down allows them to trap the metal really well, plus they're working with the kneeled panels, I believe. And uh, it makes it a lot simpler process. If anybody's going to do any production next to making a complete die set, uh, hammer forming like the, the Polish factory did that uh, did those co cobra, uh, Kirkham Cobras that's the way to do it so um, where we are now is we got a few more spots that we got to do in this video I don't want it to be too long uh, Mark's going to speed up a lot of the stuff but I think you got a really good idea of what that potential of is of the wire form buck and uh, the next time we'll refine this a little bit more so that it, it flows really nice. It's flowing pretty nice now, it fits nice, but we gotta get it perfect. And we gotta seat this uh, headlight seat right on the wires. And then we'll do a trim on it because there's a lot of extra metal. And after we do the trim, it'll be easier to fine fit it. And then that'll be the uh, the perfection of the panel, the, the last stage. So 
This panel I made this way. The other side I might make a little different. So you'll be able to contrast different methods and what kind of results you get from the different methods. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's Ray from Pro Shaper in Charlton, Massachusetts. And uh, I hope you can see the value of this and I, I would love to see uh, you helping me spread the news about my channel and getting some new subscribers and more views. That would be greatly appreciated. Thanks for watching.